you know, I do a lot of Mopars. I'm known for Mopars, but today I got a Pontiac. What do you think it's gonna make? Nick's garage is located just north of Montreal, one of the coldest and snowiest major cities in the world. But when the roads look like this, driving classic muscle cars is out of the question. So on days like today, Nick cranks up the heat in the shop and gets down to work building engines. Today, he has a freshly rebuilt Pontiac 455 strapped to his dyno for testing. And he's invited us in to watch as he starts this beast for the first time. Hi, and I'm Nick, and I'm here from Nick's Garage. Well, we got something uh, rare here on my dyno today. We've got a Pontiac 455 cubic inch we've built for a 76 Trans Am that belongs to Jonathan. And Julian, his father, brought this engine here. It's a engine that originally came from a 73-74 Pontiac Grand Prix, but the cylinder heads came from a 71 GTO. So he just wanted to make a little mild build up with the cast iron intake manifold. Exhaust manifolds were also, we're gonna use our cast iron. They are ram air design. D ports, which are uh, not very common here in my shop, but we're gonna go with manifolds with a two and a half inch pipe like so. We also installed the Lunati camshaft, hydraulic flat tappet, which is like a 1500 to 5500 RPM, running also with a Rochester four barrel, which is also a factory uh, carburetor for, uh, of course, for the Spontac engine the way they were back in uh, GM. What kind of horsepower are we looking for? I do not know. Anyway, it is a 4 to 5. It's a mild build-up. Nothing very special. After all, it is a 455. It is a muscle car engine. After all, this is what we build here. And nothing too radical. We want to make sure it doesn't have a high compression. It's a 9.6 compression ratio. He wants to run also uh, power brakes. So we got a lot of vacuum for uh, power brakes. Uh, vacuum, I should say, to have uh, for the power brakes. You know, by the way, it's just a backup engine. You know, the original engine to the 76 Trans Am that belongs to Jonathan, it's a perfect running motor. All we wanted to do is build another 435, not matching, of course, just throw it in the car and have some joyride with it and put the original motor on the side. So in the meantime, when he's cruising with it, he could beat up on this 455. You know, there's a lot of my clients that, uh, when they have the original engine to the car, they don't want to beat him, kick him, rev them up. So what they do is they buy another engine just like it, not matching, and build it in any way they want. So they can abuse it, beat it, whatever you want to call it. And in this case, this is what we're doing in this uh, engine. You know, like it's not matching, it doesn't matter. You know, we build it to uh, the specs they want. My client brought most of the parts in for this engine build. And then uh, our job was to machine it, put it together, put it in the dyno, and see how it goes. So we, before we do any dyno testing, we're gonna start her up, break in the cam, because I have not started it yet. It is a flat tappet hydraulic cam. It has to be broken in. We have uh, oil with zinc in it, and also a zinc additive in it. So we gotta break it in, start her up, break it in for about 2,000 RPMs, 2,200 RPMs or so, for 20 minutes, and uh, hopefully it goes well. And are you guys ready? Let's get started. And you know we're running a Rochester carburetor here. I don't know what the CFM is got a number on it, but doesn't matter. This is what he wants to run it with, this is what we're gonna use. It should work, you know, it's economical because this is the carburetor that has two small primary barrels and two humongous barrels on the back, which is good for economy. And in this case, this is a perfect uh, reason to have it. So let's tie up the uh, choke open. Then after that, we start with our testing. And you know, I've worked with the uh, Rochester carburetors many, many times, and you know what? They are great, great carburetors. They work for me, I never had issues with them. And uh, you know what, I love them. They never give me a problem, they always work fine. So we have one here and we're gonna use it. You know, I don't have anything to heat up the choke. It's electric choke on this carburetor. So what I'm gonna do in the meantime, I'm just gonna 
I'm just gonna tie it open, because after all, when we do testing, we don't have the choke, uh, we don't want the choke to close on its own. So I'm gonna make sure it's tied open so it doesn't close on us while we're doing full throttle. There we go, done. Okay, let it stay open it's like so. That's all good. Okay, so now let's add some water to the engine block. Do I have everything closed off? Gotta make sure we have all our connections closed. For the heater hoses, for any plugs, temperature gauges, and so forth. Yeah, it's coming out, that's because now the engine is filled. So let's turn on the computer, get a water pump to work, set up the information we're looking for, and let's get started to break in the cam. It's been a while since I put a Pontiac on my dyno. Okay, we'll see how this one's gonna do. This could be fun. It's a Voodoo cam from Lunati, and it's a hydraulic flat tappet. And let's see what power it's gonna give us, and torque. Okay. You know, I used to work for Pontiac back in the day, 1976 till 1980. I worked five years for Pontiac, so I know them pretty well. I remember when they had them back in, uh, when they had the uh, 76 Trans Am when the 45 was out for the last year. Then 77 came out with the 6.6 uh, .6 liter 400. That was it. And uh, yeah, those was fun days, those days at Pontiac when I used to work there. They had the big Pontiac Bonvilles, Parisians, uh, it was something. Then uh, at the same time, we were selling Buicks too. It's a Pontiac Buick GMC Cadillac dealership I worked for. It's pretty good. Five years experience I picked up there. And all I did was engine building, carburetors, and uh, tuning cars. And that's about it. But now, here I am building them again. We're back where I started from, back in 76. But this time I'm putting them on a dyno. And if anybody's wondering what kind of a cam we're using, here's the part number. It's a Camlo 90 Voodoo cam with a lift of 468 and 49. Duration is at 219, 227. So it's a mild cam. So uh, here's the RPM range, 1300 to 5500 RPM, hydraulic flat tappet. You know, I'm curious to see how it's gonna go. It's been a while I've built one of these. So, uh, and uh, it's also 30 overboard. The cylinder heads were not milled down, nothing like that. It's a flat top piston. It was also zero decked and that's it. And we're using a 40 thou head gasket. We did a nice valve job on it. And we had the motor uh, balanced. We had a new oil pump, new timing chain, and uh, with the windows tray and we're ready to start it. Maybe just a few legs. Yeah, if you wanna watch, I'm gonna put it on right now. Actually, add some fuel, uh, Leo, add some fuel for me, please. Okay, let me put the specs in right now. We were using Petro Canada 94. Actually, with a 9.6, we probably won't need it, but anyways, we got 94 in stock, and that's what we're gonna use. Okay, I'm gonna put the fuel pump on for the first time. You ready? Yeah. Let's... It's leaking. Oh, Will it leak over here? Yeah, leak here, here. Tighten it up. Use a five inch key. There you go. All right, choke is open. Check the time, it should be around, you know, 25, 26, 30, anywhere there, 32. It's just to break in the cam. Yep. I'll put the old two sensor on. It is a brand new rebuilt carburetor. Whoever did it, I do not know. But you know what? Here's a vacuum port to close off. Let's hope it works well. After all, that's why it's here. Yep. 
You never know. You, you know, you put so many pieces together. Of course, to my experience, I've done it so many times, so many years. I never had any issues, but you just never know one day. One day you might just turn over an engine, and when it fires up on its own, something might just let go. And you know what? You always have that little fear. Maybe a weak link or something. Maybe, who knows, maybe you miss something, but you never know. But you know what? Just get it started, push it up there, bring up the RPM, and we're going to see. You know, whatever breaks, we'll fix it. After all, it is here. And the reason it's here is to see if it goes well. And before we install it in the car, we really want to make sure it runs well. Imagine you put it in the car, then you find the problem after, then removing the engine again. That's a lot of work. So here it is on the dyno. Let's get it going. I'm just going to open up the uh, screws a little bit for the air-fuel ratio. See, I didn't put it on, it came off. You see that? Me, yeah, I put on a spring a hundred times, it never comes off. It flew off. Uh, Leo, this is how you put it. This is how you put it. Look. I tried it like three times. I don't know. I just, I just went like that. Just like that. Look. That's the test. I just went like this, like this. Ding, boom. Cut my fingers right off. Okay, we're ready. Let's uh, see if we need gas for sure, right? We got full throttle, Leo? I think we do. Sometimes, sometimes I look down. You have to see, you have to see the barrels are wide open. You see, like this, look. I'm gonna show you something. Now this could be binding, this could be binding on a gasket. So in reality, what you do is you look straight down. Look, let it go. You see that? It's wide open. Now you know it's full throttle. Sometimes a linkage could be binding somewhere and you're, you're trying to push it back and it doesn't go back and you think, oh, it's full throttle. But always look down. That tells you the answer. Okay, man? Yep. Here we go. Let's get it started. Can't wait to hear this motor run. It is going to be loud because the exhaust is exactly a two and a half inch pipe going into a six inch pipe. We don't have a flange or a reducer there, but it doesn't matter. We're going to let it go like that. It's going to be a little bit loud. Who cares? And let's get it started. Here we go. Open the O2 sensor. Let's read the air fuel ratio. Our screen up there is open. We're all good. Okay, give me a sec. Get the O2 sensor on. Fuel pump works. Looks good, Leo. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. That looks good. You're good? Let's go. Anything? No, I got Just put a rag over it, Leo. Did you, did you see the mark? Did you see the mark? Yeah, almost. Oh. Tell me where we're at, okay? It should be around there somewhere. Hey? Okay, whatever. Leo, grab it, pull it. 
Look, all the water. They missed the sewer. Look, all the water came out. Push it uh, towards the office, okay? Ready? Ready? Go. Go. Oh, wait. It's on a wire here. Hold on. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Oh, Never seen that. Why did the thing go back? Surprised. It's on wheels, but uh, all the water was shooting at it. Leo, you pull it forward, I'm gonna steer it, okay? Oh, it was too far. Yeah, it was too far back. We gotta bring it. Bring it forward. Okay, it's it's good there. Okay, let's try it. Okay, you know what? We are 29 degrees. 29 I'm gonna I'm gonna advance it just a little bit more. Here we go. I'll start it up again, you can check it, and that's it, okay? Yeah, we made a mess here. I'm gonna bring the little broom here after. Ah, there we go, ready to go. Plug it in, and let's check it again. I'm sure you're gonna get about 32. Doesn't matter, it's only for break-in. We have to line up the dyno for the sewer. The drainage of the water from the dyno wasn't going to the uh, sewer, so uh, we have to bring the stand forward, and uh, I mean, I messed with the water on the floor, but it doesn't matter. It's only water. It's gonna dry up. Water from the uh, absorber, not from the engine. Ah, it's all good. But you notice it's pretty loud, eh? You see it? There's no flange. See it? It's wide open. Okay, it's gonna be loud, but who cares? Anyways, we're pretty good. We're ready to get going. Let's go. You ready, Leo? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Put my O2 sensor on, but it seems to be running lean while it's uh, breaking in. <clears throat> Come on, O2 sensor, hop on. Here we go. Ready?
pressure is good. O2 sensor, air fuel ratio is good. Vacuum, we're gonna have enough power brakes for sure. So. There we go. We just broke it in for 20 minutes. Everything seems good. So far we got no oil leaks, no vacuum leaks, no rattles, no noises. And this is what I look forward to, especially when I break in a cam. And at the same time, I look for everything. And so far, everything went well. So uh, just gonna let it sit down for a few minutes, cool down the valve springs. Then I want to really blast it. What's our number gonna be? I have no idea. I don't know, you, uh, you guys tell me. So you know what, let it cool down. We're gonna do some testing in a few minutes and we'll take it from there. We got Petrocanda 94 Octane. So let's get on. <clears throat> let's get on with the star. Let's get on with the testing. And here we go. <clears throat> My voice not the best today, but let's do the best we can. Let's go. It's on a cold day outside today, and uh, for some reason my voice, it's always like this on a cold day. Why? I don't know. It doesn't matter. My goal is to start testing this motor. We're gonna set the timing, and let's get on with it. Let's go. I sound like the Godfather. Okay, <clears throat> put, the old, <clears throat> put the O2 sensor on. Here we go, here we go.
500 torque. Horsepower, 373, 372. The torque is pretty good. We're at 496, 490. You know what? I'm just gonna look at the book, see what this thing has. I'm curious. I was hoping for 500 plus torque and 400 plus horsepower. Let's see. Let me see what this thing does from the factory. Here we go. Pontiac. Here we go, Pontiac. Let's say 1970. 455. 37 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, and the torque should be 500. So we're close to those numbers anyways. But I noticed something. Carpet is too small. I got a vacuum draw of 1.8. Wow, okay. We gotta look at that camera, see if uh, the secondary is opened up. Looks like uh, we could get more power out of this thing. Okay. Let's check it out. Let's see. I think the carpet is too small. Okay, we hit it. It's open. Okay, it's working. Okay, good. Okay, the carpet is working, so we're gonna make another test. <clears throat> I think the carpet is too small, but you know what, let's make another test the way it is. Let's go for it. So I'm thinking that the carpet is too small, but you know what? A 455 with 10 and a quarter compression is a 500 torque, foot pounds of torque, 370 horsepower. Right here, we got 9.6 compression ratio. We got a horsepower of 372, and the torque is at 496. So we're pretty good, we're pretty good. Draws manifolds, cast iron take, Rochester carburetor. I'm gonna play with the timing, do a few more tests, and see how it goes. So let's go. Leo, turn on the fan when I, when I, when I say so, okay? I'm not gonna touch the timing here, we're gonna do it after. Okay, here we go. Leo, remove the valve cover. I think we got a little noise in there. I need to uh, check out the walker. I want to make sure. We got to look into it. We got to make sure because we're going to rev at five grand. I want to make sure we have no issues. There's a little ticking noise. It's the first time we took it at five grand. And the reason it's on the dyno is to look for these issues. So let's take out the valve cover and take a look. Do we have a loose walker? What do we got? Okay, let's take a look. Good. It's the lift one. Try this one. Look at this one. Oh, yeah, I see the, it. I see it. Yeah. The, uh, the oil is not holding inside the lifter.
Yeah. 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 You know, we just got one lifter that's not holding the oil. So when it started up better one, hopefully fills up with oil and continue testing. It's a hydraulic flat type of cam. So I guess with the high RPM, we drain the oil from the lifter. So I'm gonna run it again. We got good oil pressure. I don't see why uh, maybe the lifters got collapsed. You know what, let's do some further testing and find out. <clears throat> After all, it's on the diner for that reason. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay, let's go. Leo, pay attention, the lifter noise should go away. I'll be listening. Okay? Give me a sec. Let the O2 sensor go on. No, we should hit the 500 torque, I'm sure. Okay, we're at 372 horsepower. I was hoping for 400. We're far from one horsepower per cubic inch. But you know what? It's a mild 455, nothing special. Cast iron intake, cast iron exhaust manifolds. Small Rochester four barrel. <clears throat> well, she's got a little cam and that's it. It's a very small cam. Actually, it's not bad. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Okay, you know, <clears throat> I'm just gonna back up the timing a little bit, two degrees. <clears throat> I wish my voice would come back. I don't know why my voice is so bad. Like people tell me, you sound like the Godfather. Okay, let me just make an adjustment on the timing. Still takes a little bit, but not as much. Yeah. It's a lifter, don't worry.
Okay. I'm ready. Put the fan. Just, just put it back. Here we go. So I backed up the timing a couple of degrees. So we got our, we finally got our 500 plus foot pounds of torque at 502, 504, 504, 3400 RPM. Horsepower, we're up there at 370, 375. Not bad, not bad. It's not bad. We got factory numbers. For a simple 455, you can see the vacuum has 20 inches of vacuum on idle. If your ratio is good, carburetor is kind of small, but it is what it is. But you know what? I'm happy with it. It works good. We're gonna back up the Tommy bit right again. But it's not power. I mean, what, what I can you ask for? Huh? And it's less, and it's less compression. Yeah. It's not power. What else can you ask for? Let's try it. Yeah, I know, I know. I just backed it up another two degrees. I'm just curious, make another test. Whenever you're ready, Leo, go ahead. Five oh seven, five oh eight. Okay, you know, my voice is getting worse, but the power is getting better. So I'm gonna back up another two degrees. Oh boy, this is bad. Degrees. I'm gonna put a longer pipe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna put the timing where it was. Anyways, that test we did before was much better. We're good. <clears throat> we're good. Sorry guys for my voice.
Okay, so we're gonna finalize it at 508 foot pounds of torque at 3,500 RPM. And our horsepower came in at 379.2 at 4,600 RPM. It is a basic 455 Pontiac engine. Nothing special, just a little voodoo cam. Lots of vacuum for power brakes. Just a stock engine. Everything else went well. I'm happy with it. Maybe with a bigger carb, it will make more power. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it. I'll wait for my client to come in. See if he wants to go with a bigger carburetor. If it is, we'll do some further testing. If he's happy the way it is, we'll leave it like that and then put it in the end, in the car. So, there you have it, you guys. 455 Poncho or Pontiac. Okay, right now I'm just going to make myself a nice cup of hot tea with lemon. With lemon. Thank you. See you next week. And you guys, if you look down below the video, we have a whole bunch of merchandise that you guys can buy. So whatever you like, buy it, love it, wear it, and enjoy it. And help spread the word of Vix Garage. And if you have some time, check out our Patreon page. We have extra content, and you guys can watch it and take it from there. And we'll see you next time.